Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the link between birds such as pigeons and a type of lung disease known as bird fancier's lung. Now, bird keeping may not be as popular as it once was, but people still keep pet birds, especially in the area I work in the northeast of England, and it's quite a big hobby amongst the older patients that I see. It's also something which the famous boxer Mike Tyson loves, and he once said that he'd be willing to pay up to $2 million for a pigeon. So in this video, we're going to be going over how bird fancier's lung disease is caused, signs and symptoms of this, things to cover in the history and exam and investigations, and finally, the management of the condition. If you enjoy the video, please remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly videos, and please give this video a thumbs up. Bird fancier's lung is a type of hypersensitivity pneumonitis, and it's caused by an immune response to inhaled allergens from birds. Pneumonitis is the medical word used to refer to inflammation of lung tissue. So when you break down the term hypersensitivity pneumonitis, it simply means inflammation of the lung tissue caused by something that you're very sensitive to. In the case of bird fancier's lung, the thing that you're sensitive to may be the dry dust or droppings or feathers of birds. These antigens usually come from pigeons, but they may also come from other birds such as parrots, chickens or turkeys, and people who work with birds or who own many birds are at risk of developing the disease. Feather-filled pillows are also, by their very nature, having bird feathers in them, so you may find that if you're very allergic to these antigens, you might want to get rid of these pillows. So how do inhaled particles cause lung disease? Well, the inhaled particles cause inflammation of the alveoli, which are the small air-filled sacs in the lungs. Proteins from birds include mucins and antibodies, which stimulate a significant immune response from the body. The lungs become inflamed with the formation of granulomas, and these are small clumps of immune cells which form at sites in the body where there's inflammation. It can take many years of exposure to cause bird fancier's lung, with an average of one and a half years to cause acute disease and around 15 years to cause chronic disease. So what are the signs and symptoms of bird fancier's lung? Well, initial symptoms include shortness of breath, which is known as dyspnea, and dry cough. In chronic bird fancier's lung disease, symptoms may include these, in addition to weight loss, extreme fatigue, and progressive pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis is scarring of the lung tissue. This scar tissue isn't as elastic, meaning that the lungs are stiffer and the lungs can't expand as well. It's generally the most serious consequence of the disease as it progressively and irreversibly diminishes the lungs efficiency over time. As a result, sufferers may have repeated chest infections and ultimately struggle to breathe. When making a potential diagnosis of bird fancier's lung disease, it's important to take a history from the patient, asking them about specific respiratory symptoms such as breathlessness and cough as well as specific points, including exposure to birds, what kind of birds they've kept, and for how long. Examination of the patient is very important, and you need to pay particular attention when listening to the chest with a stethoscope, where you may hear fine crackles on auscultation. Some initial tests can include antibody blood tests, lung function tests, which are likely to show a restrictive pattern, and chest x-rays, However, a completely normal looking chest x-ray does not rule out bird fancier's lung disease. So let's take a look at a chest x-ray of someone with hypersensitivity pneumonitis caused by exposure to bird allergens and see what their chest x-ray looks like. In this chest x-ray, you can see diffuse bilateral nodular shadowing. Now the preferred test is a high resolution CT scan. CT scans usually show physical changes to the lung structure, and these are a ground glass appearance or something called a mosaic pattern as the disease progresses. A mediastinal lymphadenopathy may also be seen. So let's take a look at an example of this. In this CT scan, you can see diffuse bilateral ground glass opacities and fine nodules. Another useful potential investigation is endoscopy, and this is where a flexible camera is passed into the lungs, and that's known as a bronchoscopy. 
This can show chronic inflammation of lung tissue and granulomas with poorly defined margins. A sample of tissue can be taken, which is known as a biopsy, or washings of fluids can be taken, which is known as a bronchialveolar lavage. So how do you treat bird fancier's lung disease? Well, the most important thing to do is to remove the trigger, which are birds. It's important to also try to remove feather filled pillows and deep clean all the previously exposed areas because this can stop the underlying inflammatory response. Although the symptoms may continue depending on the existing damage that's taken place to the lungs. This can be a pretty difficult conversation to have with the patient, especially if they've kept birds for many years as pets. And so it's important to elicit their ideas, concerns and expectations around the management during this discussion. In terms of medications, well, steroids such as prednisolone can help with reducing initial inflammation, but they're not really a long-term solution. The long-term solution is to remove the trigger. In terms of prognosis, well, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Unless fibrosis has progressed beyond recovery, symptoms should improve, sometimes quite dramatically in the absence of the allergens. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful and you learned something new. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I'll get back to you. And until next time, bye.